In Chapter 1, we looked at how important experiment is to chemistry and in all sciences. And an important part of good experiment are good measurements. So we're going to look in detail at measurements. First, let's look at what is a measurement. A measurement is a quantitative observation, meaning that it is an observation that has a number associated with it. A measurement is some comparison to an agreed upon standard. And every measurement has a number and a unit. For example, if I asked you how long it took you to do your homework, and you said three, well, that wouldn't give me very much information without the unit. Three minutes, three hours, three days. So a unit is just as important as the number, and that's something you'll definitely want to remember on your in-class quizzes. If you don't put a unit down for a measurement, you will lose points. So the unit tells you a few things. One, it tells you how what you're measuring compares to a standard. And it also tells you the physical property. For example, if you give a measurement of 6.3 seconds, then you know that time is being measured. The number part of a measurement tells you how your measurement compares to the standard. And it also tells you what's known as the uncertainty in the measurement. All measurements have some degree of uncertainty in them, and a correctly recorded measurement will let you know what that uncertainty is. And the uncertainty depends on the measuring device itself, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's look at this example of a measurement. Scientists have measured the average global temperature rise over the past century to be 0.6 degrees Celsius. So the two parts of this measurement are the unit, which tells us not only the temperature is being measured, but that we're comparing our number of parts to the Celsius scale. The 0 0.6 means that there is a rise 6 tenths compared to the 1 degree of the standard unit in a Celsius scale. This also gives us an indication of our uncertainty. And our last digit lets us know the uncertainty of our measurement, and this tells us that our device is such that we know that the actual rise is going to be somewhere between 0.5 and 0.7 degrees Celsius. Notice that that's plus or minus 1 of the last place value of this measurement. We will talk in more detail about certainty and uncertainty and how to determine it. What we're going to do now is focus on the number part of measurements. And one of the first things we're going to look at is something known as scientific notation. Scientific notation is a handy way of writing very large and very small numbers, which often come into play in chemistry. So here are two examples of very big and very small numbers. The sun's diameter is 1,392,000,000 meters, and an atom's average diameter is three, looks like 10 billionth of a meter. So these are, they take time and are unwieldy to write out. And then also, some calculators have an eight digit limit. So we're going to look at a handier, more easily accessible way to record these very large and very small numbers. That's what's known as scientific notation. Now here are two examples of scientific notation. And the two things that you need to remember that when a number is expressed in scientific notation, it always has a power of 10. And it always has a number that has one digit to the left of the decimal point. So in this value, the decimal point is not expressly written. But there's only one digit here, and we know that this is where the decimal point is. So one digit to the left of the decimal point and a power of 10. That is the definition of a number that is expressed in scientific notation. Now let's look at this exponent. When the exponent on the 10 is positive, and by the way, the exponents are the superscripts here the small numbers that are above the power of 10. When the exponent on the 10 is positive, it means that our value is larger than 10. So when we looked at the sun's diameter, 1,392,000,000 meters, and expressed that in scientific notation, 
our power of 10 is positive because this is a very, very large number. When we're looking at a value that is less than 1, then our exponent is going to be negative. So if we look at the atom's average diameter, which is this value here, our exponent is negative. This value is much less than 1. Now I want to point out that these values, 3 times 10 to the minus 10th, and this value written in standard notation, are equivalent. They express the exact same numerical value. It's just that scientific notation takes up less room and is easier to handle mathematically. The same up here. This number and this number are the exact same number. They are just expressed differently. Now let's take a look at how we can use scientific notation to easily compare the values of numbers. The first thing we want to do when we're com comparing two values is we want to look at the exponents on the 10. The larger exponent is going to indicate the larger value. So if I look at this first number, my decimal part is 1.23 and my decimal part is 4.56, but my exponent is 5 and this exponent is 2. The exponent of 5 is larger than 2, so my number on the left is larger. If I look at this value that is written in blue, my exponent of negative 2 is larger than negative 5. So this value is larger than this value, even though the decimal parts um, are not larger. It's the exponent that we care about. The only time we look at the um, decimals to compare two values is if our exponents are the same. So in this case, we look at 7.89 versus 1.23, and this value is larger, so this is the larger overall number. Again, our decimal part will always have one number to the left of the decimal point, and then in scientific notation, we're going to multiply it by 10 taken to some power. Negative exponents indicate a number less than 1. Positive exponents indicate a number that is greater than 10. Okay, now let's look at how to write numbers in scientific notation from numbers that are in standard notation. The first thing that you want to do is locate the decimal point. Then you move the decimal point until only one digit is to its left. This will be the decimal part of our scientific notation. We're going to take this number and multiply it by 10 to the n and n is going to be the number of places we've moved our decimal point. If our original number is large, then n is going to be positive. If our original number is less than 1, then n is going to be negative. Now some people it's easier to remember if you look at the direction that you go. So if you move the decimal point from your standard number to the left, then n, your exponent, is going to be positive. If you moved your decimal point from standard notation to the right, then your exponent is going to be negative. So here's an example. We're going to take this number, 12,340, and write it in scientific notation. The decimal point is not expressly written, but we know it's at the end of this whole number. We move it so there's only one digit to the left of the decimal point. This is now our decimal part. We multiply our number by 10, and we had to move our decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4 places. So our exponent is 4. Our original number is greater than 10, so our exponent is positive. Or you can look at it. We moved our decimal to the left, so we have a positive value. Let's look at doing this for a value that's less than 1. Here. Our, ex our decimal point is expressly written. We have to move it one, two, three, four places. We stop as soon as we have one number to the left of our decimal point. We moved our decimal point four places, but our original value is less than one, so it's negative. Or you can think of it that you had to move your decimal point to the right, and so therefore it's negative. Now let's look at going the opposite way, writing a number in standard form from scientific notation. 
we're going to use our exponent to let us know which way we have to move the decimal point. We have to move our decimal point six places, and our number is less than one, so we're going to move it to the left six places. When we do that, this is where our decimal point goes. One, two, three, four, five, six. We write our decimal point here, and in all the place values where there were no numbers, I put zeros. Also, it's a good idea to put a zero in front of your decimal point just to keep track of where that decimal point is. So stop the slide, or stop the voice lecture really, and take a look at these practice examples and go ahead and write each of these values in scientific notation. Check your answers, and there's two things I want to point out. This value, we did not have to move our decimal point, so it's going to be to the zeroth power since we didn't move our decimal point. And then this value, when we wrote it in scientific notation, we didn't include the zeros. If you did, I would not count it wrong at this point, but we'll look later as to why these zeros were not included in our decimal part. If you have any questions about these answers, please be sure to ask me during class. Now let's take a look going the opposite way, pause the voice lecture, and write out the answers to these, going from scientific notation to standard form. Check your answers, and if you have any questions, please let me know.